You know, since I've been prepping in the 90s, solar panels have come a long, long way. And this here is a perfect example of something that would have cost you hundreds of dollars, say, back 20 or 30 years ago. And today is pretty darn budget friendly and affordable. This is the RMR's SP P25 25 watt flexible pet monocrystalline solar panel. All right, everybody, welcome back. So this is something that I've been meaning to pick up for a while. I wanted a flexible, smaller kind of solar panel that I could move around. Uh, I have my portable foldable ones, but they're kind of big and heavy. This is something I could put on a backpack and hike with and have no problem with because it's super, super lightweight. And it's flexible. It's foldable. Let me give you a quick look and see. I mean, you can fold the heck out of this thing, you know, and you're not going to damage it. That's kind of a nice feature to have when you're looking to strap something onto something, like say a backpack or a vehicle or whatever, you've got that flexibility and that makes for a very, very um, handy installation factor on something like this. So, these are uh, monocrystalline solar panels. They reduce the loss of light energy and the highest solar conversion possible. That's according to them. We're gonna find out, we're gonna put it on a meter and test it out. One of the things I do notice about this panel, I will say this, um, I just have my studio lights on like always and I notice the red light up on top here is blinking. Now I moved it out of the way there, so now it'll stop, of course. So that's pretty darn good that it's picking up just... Most panels I test out here don't pick up just the lights in here. That's pretty darn impressive. Um, it's got a DC output of 19 volts at 1 amp, 23.6 volts at 1.5 amp, 1.1 amp, I'm sorry. Um, one of the things I noticed was if you take 19 volts divided by 1 amp, that comes out to be about 19 watts. So it may be a little bit lower rated than they say. Um, the USB output is 12 volts at 1.5 amp, 9 volts at 2 amps, and 5 volts at 3.4 amps. So it is a pretty decent, uh, decent little USB output in there. There are two outputs, and you'll notice the cable down here. I'll show you what that about in a second. There are two outputs here. You do have your 12 volt plug output, okay? And there's my light again. And you do have your USB output. This is auto sensing. It will charge your devices correctly. You don't have to worry about it. Anything you plug into that USB output will be charged at the correct rate. Um, we are going to test it with my uh, my tablet. This plug over here, this little, I believe it's a 5.3 millimeter plug, is what this cable here is all about. This cable comes with it, and you want to talk about the most basic, simple solar setup. You literally plug this thing in, you clip this to your plus or minus terminals, and you're off and running. Now, could you use this, say, for charging a battery in an emergency? Absolutely. Um, would I keep it in my vehicle to jump start it if my battery died? Mm, I don't think so. I think that would take quite a while. Uh, maybe if I had a 100 watt panel, you know, uh, that might help a little bit. But that's kind of low for that. But this is where, that, where I tell people you can always do some kind of solar. With something like this and say a 12 amp hour lead acid battery, and maybe you put a charge control in between it so you don't kill the battery, you can plug this, hang it in your window with the hangers, Stick it out there. Now, granted, you're not going to get the same efficiency as putting it outside, but if you live in an apartment and all you can do is hang this in a window, hey, you know what? You're getting that solar power in from that panel. Uh, connect this to a charge control, connect that to your battery, and guess what? You've just made yourself a 12-volt solar power backup system. You can add inverters to it. You can add anything you want to it and go from there and make it better and bigger. But it's really a good starter system, and that's kind of cool. It's also handy... For camping, for devices, you know, something like this. You don't worry if it gets wet. You don't worry about any of that. You just toss it outside of your tent. Maybe you fold it over the top of your tent like that. You stick it out there. You plug in your, you, you run this, you run your plug, your USB plug into the, into the tent, and you can charge up your devices. Um, that's really, really handy, and that's probably the best, best part of this panel, I would say, is the ability to charge your devices right off it without even worrying about it. Let's take it outside. I want to put it in the sun, and I want to test out its output. Uh, we're going to use a meter, and then I want to see how it does charging a couple of devices. I do have my, my little power meter here. We're going to see what we're getting off. And again, I don't expect it to be a full 25 to 30 watts or something. Um, they do make a bigger version of this. It is a 50-watt version. I'll put the link down below where you can see both of them. So either one would be suitable for a smaller kind of emergency backup system. And that's what I like to focus on. Not putting your whole house on solar, because that's something expensive and for many people unrealistic. This is very, very affordable. I think these run about $35. So for something like that, that's a whole lot more affordable. So let's get it outside, try it out, and uh, see how it works. 
All right, so I have this facing uh, back towards where the sun is at the moment. Um, I'm actually very impressed with this. I just threw it there. This is not by any means optimized or anything. And look at the output. 21.4. That's pretty darn close to 25, so I really can't complain about that. That's pretty darn good. So let's see what we're getting in. If, it's a, if it was a 12-volt battery, I have it marked over here. Yeah, and I mean, if I'm, let's, let's see if you block the panel. So you are losing a little bit if I block parts of it, but you see you're not losing a ton. That's really, really pretty darn good, i got to say. Um, it's impressive. I didn't expect it to go up that high. I expected like 17, 15, you know, not, not, not anywhere near as high as that. And I do have ant crawling up there. i got to get that ant out of here. Uh, anyway, so let's test it out with some, uh, with some gear here, and I'll give you an idea of what this thing can do in charge and why I think it's really, really handy, even for uh, amateur radio operators. If you have uh, some USB chargers and you want to charge up your gear out in the field, it's a pretty darn good option. Let's now, this is kind of impressive as well. I am kind of blocking the panel a little bit. But as you can tell here, I've got that red light on. I'm charging this little FRS radio. And still getting, there we go, 20.6 volts off of that. So that's pretty darn good. Really impressed with it. That's uh, that's definitely handy to be able to do two things at once. Now, granted, I'm not taking a ton of battery power on the 12 volt end of things, but that's definitely a, a cool factor there. So it does seem to work simultaneously. You can charge your uh, USB devices as well as keep your um, panels and batteries, uh, your batteries topped off using this panel. And that's pretty cool, you know, that it's able to divide the uh, the workload between the two. So, let's get it inside. I'll give you some final information on it. I think it's an excellent value for what it really is. And uh, we'll uh, finish up. All right, so we're back inside. Yeah, I got to say, that was uh, a little impressive. I didn't expect it to, uh, to get up that high. Um, I kind of, you know, I know these things kind of tend to... Um, overstate their ratings. So this one actually is pretty darn close to what it's supposed to be. If you take the 1.1 amp divided by the 2122, you're getting about 22, 21 watts out of this thing. That's really not bad. I'm sorry, times one, not divided. Um, so that's actually not, not bad. And for the price, you can't beat it. Again, you, the 12 volt output on the USB is going to be either 1.5, 9 volts is 2 amps, or 5 volts is 3.4 amps. Um, it does do a really decent 12 volt output on it, and I mean, for me personally, I'm probably just going to use this to charge USB devices. But I will keep this around, this cable around, because you never know, it might come in handy to charge up a battery or something else smaller, any kind of 12 volt type device that I want to charge up. I'm going to probably change out the terminals, but I'm not sure what I'm going to change them out to yet. Maybe Anderson power poles, maybe not. Uh, having clips is makes them kind of versatile for everything. No matter what I have, I can make that work. You know, I can clip it inside, even in, even inside the Anderson power poles, if I have to in an emergency. So, I like keeping my options open with that. So, let's talk about the size. It's 10.4 inches wide and 17.4 inches long. Weighs about 17 ounces, so it's definitely lightweight enough to stick on a backpack. Like I said, this thing is super, super lightweight. There's your info on the back here. Let's see if you can see that. So, yeah, it's uh, flexible. Pretty handy. Definitely something I'd stick on on a vehicle. You know, if I was deployed somewhere doing ham radio stuff, um, definitely I'd something I'd keep uh, my USB phones and tablets and all that other stuff charged up with. Keeping it outside of a tent in an emergency, uh, something to go in your bug out gear. Definitely. I mean, if you could strap that on the back of your bug out bag and uh, carry it around. Again, it does advertise that you have power. That's something to think of in a bad bug out situation. You know, a situation where you might be set on by other types of predators, you know, who says, hey, he's got something of value, I'm going to steal it. But it probably could fit on the interior of most bug out bags, and that's very, very thin. You could slip that down the back and then fill your bag with all your gear. And, you know, it's not going to be all that long. It's only 17 inches uh, this way. So, not bad. All in all, pretty good deal. I will put a link down below. Again, these are from Banggood. Um, I'm, I'm kind of trying to find out what the, the neat survival and outdoor gear and stuff they have there. And they have some really cool stuff. As I see stuff that I kind of want to test for the channel. We're going to try it out, see if I can get them to uh, to uh, give me more information than they have on their site with some of the items. But uh, this one I kind of had to research on my own. They really didn't have a ton of specs on there, but uh, I'm pretty impressed with it. All in all, definitely a cool little system. Again, for people who are in an apartment complex, can't put out big solar panels outside of their house, a couple of these hanging in a window, or you can even get the 50 watt version of this hanging in the window. Run this to a charge controller, to, into your battery, 
and connect an inverter into that. And guess what? You just built your first solar power backup system. And instead of buying an expensive, uh, you know, power station, you've done it for pennies on the dollar. Now, you can do it that way. You're not going to get the kind of reliability and, you know, uh, usability, say, from a power station where it's very portable. But uh, it's definitely a whole lot cheaper. And for a fixed, uh, fixed unit, that's pretty darn cool. Anyway, folks, the link will be down below. Like I said, about $34.99, so $35. Bucks. Not bad. Definitely a cool little item. So it's the IMARS Flexible Pet Monocrystalline Solar Panel. It's their SPP25. Like I said, they do have a 50-watt unit if you want to check it out there. I will put either one, and you can decide which one will fit your, uh, your needs and your wants. And uh, check them out. Anyway, folks, don't forget to check out all our links down below. This link will be down below there. After that's our Amazon store. Our freeze dries wholesaler link. You click that link, you save 15%. It's a new month. It's getting close to possible you know, uncertainty in the world. So I would definitely give them a look and see if there's anything in there you could possibly pick up from them. Just by clicking the link, you're saving 15%. Uh, we have our My Patriot Supply link down there, which is preparewithiridium.com. I was overwhelmed at how many people were ordering from that last month. So I'm really glad to see people getting stocked up. That was the whole point of this channel, is to help people get prepared. So check them out. That's preparewithiridium.com. And our Thrive Life link down below. If you're interested in getting started, we do have a video coming up soon. It's going to be about specials from the uh, Thrive Life store so for August. So check them out, and I thank you for watching. Remember, you can't control what happens, but you can prepare for it.